Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. Welcome to RCI TV, and we're back once again on Mondays with the ongoing championship that is the GT4 and TCX with Monday Multiclass Madness. Penultimate round five tonight taking place at Indianapolis in the dark, located in Indiana and constructed in 1909, making it the second purpose-built banked oval circuit just after Brooklyn's in the UK. Third oldest permanent motorsport venue in the world, hosting a variety of races throughout the year, including the famous Indy 500 and the Brickyard 400. Just under 4.2 kilometers in length tonight with 14 turns. I'm John Dalton, your lead commentator. Alongside me is Ash Bibby, and behind the cameras is Jesse Lee. And of course, next door to us, as always, are live stewards. Welcome, everyone. And uh, thank you, John, for that lovely introduction. Uh, broadcasting debut today. Uh, yes, I'm excited, and at the same time, also very nervous, John. Yeah, so it can be uh, quite nerve-wracking. But uh, yeah, of course, uh, you, you've been through enough broadcasts with us, you've heard us enough times, and you've been with us here at RCI for a fair few months now, so I'm sure all will go swimmingly well. We're just coming to the end of the BMW M2 qualifying at the moment, of course, with the uh, multi-class setup. Split qualifying here tonight, with the first 10 minutes reserved for the M2s. The second 10 minutes, of course, reserved for the GT4s, which are, of course, lining up on pit lane as we speak. Been riding aboard with Callum Kerrigan throughout the lap, and you can see, Ash, it's uh, quite a dark dark circuit, of course, Indianapolis. There's a couple of floodlights around the venue, but, you know, compared to modern motorsport venues, very old school circuit so typically not a lot of lighting as Callum Kerrigan there bails his lap and back to the pits he will go Nico Kumpu is the only remaining car I think on a valid lap quite possibly actually Spoda Skrillex as well just behind so we're going to see the battle of pole position here Nico Kumpu peels off into the pit lane he'll seek no further improvement so Spoda Skrillex the number 200 does he have anything in the tank for Nico Kumpu of course it's a very small margin to make up here as he comes through the final sector on the track map I think he's staying out for the lap no he's coming down the lane and to the number 200 sponk sports will take no further part in the session as the uh, camera rounds through the grandstand there and comes on to the pit lane and that is the m2 qualifying finish so nico kumpu on pole position spoda skrillex just behind it's going to be a tight fight between those two today rafael kuehl callum kerrigan matthias byron les stevenson tom shipston phil roberts christian lingren and alexander van der Voda round out the top 10 and ash just over a second covering the top 10 i think this is going to be quite a packed race tonight especially between p4 and 9 it's a very small margin there as well yes john it does look really really tight on the grid here today uh the gt3s have just put themselves on track um sorry the gt4s have just put themselves on the track uh particularly battles today we're going to be watching uh azure Gort is gunning for the championship win overall uh, closely followed behind by Redford and Boydman. It is very tight looking at the standings. It's all to play for today. It's not make or break, it's still anybody's champ. But I think today's race is definitely going to make a massive difference. Yeah, championship, of course, uh, still wide open here. So it's uh, going to be a very tight one indeed. It's going to be one of those rounds where you're going to try and net as many points, of course, as you can. If you've had a bit of a rotten start to the season, it's going to be the time to turn it all around now. Uh, number 54 is at the head of the grid. That's uh, Denak Kalmari, I believe, uh, just ahead of Azure Go at the moment in the Alpine. Again, a car that's uh, not really been picked all too much here. Uh, in the GT4 class. And again, a uh, small update today hidden in the patch files. Uh, slight change to the GT4 tyre camber values. So we'll see how that affects the drivers today. Of course, probably some back end BOP changes in the patch as well. So might see a few cars shining, a few cars, you know, dragging their heels at the back. But Kelly in the number 25 Ash looked very strong in practice in the Porsche. Uh, Kelly did look very, very strong today, John. Um, every, everybody in the in the GT4 field did look like they were on form today. There was there was no one really of note that was uh, too far off the pace. Uh, I do know a lot of people have been in uh, enjoying the DLC that did come out today. Uh, I did partake in a little bit myself, but as not knowing the track too well, I did spend a lot of time in the grass. Um, it yeah, wasn't the, uh... my finest hour. 
the Nord's life are quite a, a tricky track. I mean, even I found myself in the Armco quite a few times uh, today through various guises of racing, of course. Uh, lots of Nord's life action happening uh, around the world of ACC and various streams, and of course, all over Twitch at the moment. Every stream is this Nord's lifer. Denat Kamari, first time on the board with a uh, 145 flat near enough, already beaten by Azure Go. Andy Boardman then comes in clutching the Aston Martin, putting themselves at the top of the field. Yao Manzo. P4 on his first run. Martin Ulrich straight to the top with a very strong time in the little Ginetta. Matt Stevens slots himself in P4. Vossi Tigris in to P3. Foster down in P8 at the moment. Carlos Calata Yud comes through in P6. Uh, so looking very, very close at the moment. Of course, Ash, GT4's no tyre blankets. So these are going to be some of the slower times that we're seeing currently. Yeah, the GT4s, John, are a little bit of an animal. Uh, not had too much experience driving the GT4s myself, uh, but any time I have been in one, they have been a bit of a handful until you get those tyres warm. So you've got a, uh, a super chat or a membership, should we say, sorry, uh, from Kevin Boss. Uh, member for six months, RCI TV supporter is our Kevin Boss. Mr. Bibby, you know what I require from you with this membership extension. Uh, yes, I think I know what, what is required of me <laughs> here, Kevin. Uh, I am going to make you wait for it. Uh, that's just the way it's going to be. <laughs> no oohies from uh, Ash Bibby on the stream at the moment. But of course, Kevin Boss, thank you very much indeed for the extension of the membership. It's greatly appreciated. And we will sprinkle those pennies back into the RCI pot. I've uh, got a, quite a few invalidated laps going on at the moment. Yao Manzo uh, being one of them currently uh, was on a flyer, but a bit too wide over the track limits. And that is that lap done. Martin Ulrich not looking too strong this time by. He's going to have to get a big improvement to catch up to Kelly in the number 25. Uh, Vossi Tigris, of course, in P4. Rob Franken managed to set a lap that time by, locking the Mercedes together in P10 and 11 uh, just scanning the grid there i think as your goat jumped themselves up into p5 uh, mike redford in p7 as well as uh, rob franken comes across the line he seeks a small improvement beats carlos calatia to p10 it's a very small margin between these two though again equal machinery ash it's, it's normally very very hard to try and you know beat the time when you're that close on the overall lap time i mean look at the porsches of course towards the uh, top of the field uh, we've got one in P1, P4, and P8. So a big gap between all the Porsches and even Foster down in P15. So Bubbins there uh, up into P17, just behind Cowan. He's going to try and seek an improvement just yet as Ted Edwards now comes around the final banking onto the straight. You can almost hear the uh, the bold eagle screeching as the Camaro comes across the line. Does better himself up into P12 with the 144. 0.857. Of course, we've got a, a, a dusting of Chevrolets as well. Actually, we've got Daly up in P4. We've got Ted Edwards obviously in P13 and yeah, Manzo down in P15 as well. So a good spread of manufacturers today. I did see Christian Clipper earlier on, but no valid time from him yet either. Yeah, a bit of a shock that Christian Clipper hasn't registered a valid lap yet. He's been... Uh... He has definitely been up there in the last couple of uh, the last couple of races uh, in this champ. Uh, not too sure whether we might be starting from pit lane today, John. Yeah, it's a bit of a brave strat. I mean, normally in you know GT3, GT4 single class kind of races, it, it normally pays here at Indianapolis to, to be a bit cautious on the start. Of course, the first turn, long braking zone, cold tires, cold brakes. Typically, lots of people overshoot and misjudge. And that's where all the chaos unfolds in, in turn one, of course, the 90 degree right hander. But again, with multi-class, it's going to be even trickier because it's going to have to dispatch of the M2s before he even gets close to the back of the GT4. So maybe Christian Clippert just electing to have a little bit of fun tonight and not take the championship so seriously. Of course, we'll bring you championship standings just after qualifying so we know who sits where and who. Uh, Kelly back to the pit lane with two minutes on the clock. I'm not sure if that's going to be a tactical decision or not because he's going to struggle to generate temperature into those Pirellis if he does decide to come back out to try and uh, 
better themselves once again just looking out the window and kelly is underway once again uh, so they are going to have another stab at it as matthew malcolm for mount racing now comes to the line p12 currently seeking an improvement no improvement for him overall in position but a slight time improvement there 144.592 Next up, Azure Goat. This is an odd place to see uh, the number 765, Ash. Normally we see uh, Azure Goat, of course, towards the front of the field, but currently in the midst of the top 10. Definitely not where I expected to see the Goats. Uh, like you said, Johnny is definitely usually up there in the podium spots. Uh, might be struggling a little bit today. Uh, also, Redford, quite a, quite a little bit out of position for what he has been for the rest of the championship. Um, yeah, of not... course, Redford uh, was looking very strong, wasn't he, at the last round? And again, looks to try and seek some Hall of Points from here. Jordan Daly in the uh, Just Gamers number 197 have been uh, racing the Nordschleifer with him a little bit this afternoon. So uh, again, jumping from a GT3 straight into a GT4, it's going to be a bit of a, a change of pace. You know, GT3 cars, much more aerodynamic grip. GT4s tend to rely much more on the uh, mechanical side of things. So all in the kind of setup of the car and obviously how much work you can put the Pirelli through. A slower car just ahead, going to hinder him somewhat maybe through the last corner picking up a little bit of dirty air but he could be uh, maybe picking up a little bit of slipstream i'm not sure if this is going to be enough to uh, tow him to the line uh, just trying to work out who this is ahead we haven't got too many aston martins andy boardman being one of them cowan in the number 47 jordan daly of course to the line 143.832 best last time by a 144.157 so slightly hampered but just about made the scrape for the clock ash of course the clock has now hit zero so everybody everybody on a valid lap will get to finish and of course jordan daly will get another stab at it but robbie kelly has called it a day down pit lane he comes in the number 25 martin ulrich is going to be the next closest car to uh, contend but azure goat still out there and circulating ash uh, azure goat is definitely up there uh, currently sitting in p3 three he is definitely looking for an improvement to move further up that grid uh i have noticed christian clippert has finally got himself on the board sitting down there in p15 uh pulling in one minute 45.472 uh, as a last valid lap as well i can see there Yeah, so I jumped on the uh, jumped on the server earlier. Um, set a lap time myself, and uh, was very close to uh, Vossi Tigris's time. So probably somewhere up in the just inside the top ten. So Christian Clippert maybe a little bit off pace, maybe not quite gelling with Indianapolis. Meanwhile, Denat Kalmari to the line. It's an improvement of 144, but not good enough for a position improvement. Just inches himself ever so closer to Mo Plate. Meanwhile, Matthew Malcolm just behind Jordan Daly here. They're coming out onto the banking towards of course the uh, final chicane should we say as we of course hit through turn 12 into turn 13 before opening up of course into the long sweeper of 14 jordan daly hills away to the pit lane he's going to be practicing the pit entry line of course uh, a rule that we saw people fall foul of last week at barcelona quite a lot with of course the missing pit board after an incident on pit entry matthew malcolm to the line now seeks an improvement no improvement for matthew malcolm remains in p9 and that is your qualifying for tonight done and dusted so kelly looked very strong in practice and managed to convert it into a valid qualifying lap he will be your pole sitter closely followed by martin ulrich azure goat andy boardman jordan daly carlos Calatiud, matt stevens vossi tigris matthew malcolm and mike redford all inside that top 10 so all of those cars steaming down to turn one that's going to be very very impressive indeed some big names looking to try and jostle it out Meanwhile, towards the uh, TCX field, of course, Nico Kumpu, Spoda Skrillex locked in your front row. Uh, Raphael Huell in P3, Callum Kerrigan in P4, Matthias Byron P5, Les Stevenson P6, Tom Shipston closely followed by Phil Roberts, Christian Lindgren and Alexander van der Voda make up your top 10 overall in the TCX class. So plenty of big names towards the uh, front of the grid ash. It's, you know, going down into turn one, cold brakes, cold tyres, do you try and be a hero or do you play it a little bit cautiously and maybe just try and hang back and, you know, just to see what happens ahead of you and see if you can capitalize off anyone's misery?
uh, the smarter driver, John, would definitely see if they could take it a little bit easier. Coming down to turn one, it is a really big pinch point on this track and does have the potential to cause some absolute chaos. Yeah, say so fingers crossed. It's almost akin to uh, Monza's first chicane, of course, the uh, the desperate pitch point of that area. We do have the uh, championship standings queued up in the wings for you. Kevin Boss congratulating Callum Kerrigan uh, with P4. That's, in fact, Saturday night owl. Uh, ignore what you're seeing on the screen at the moment. Tim Timothy Flamger is not leading uh, GT4, but that is the uh, night owl standings from uh, last week uh, when Jesse Lee probably last time broadcasted. So... Bear with us while Jesse pulls the uh, the right number, and uh, let's see if we can pull you some championship standings. But Kevin Boss, congratulating on uh, Callum Kerrigan's P4. Again, it's a very impressive position, especially in the uh, talented stacked field that is the M2s, of course, just behind Raphael Hill, Spoda Skrillex, and Nico Kumpu tonight on that one. Of course, we do have a mandatory pit stop here tonight, the only requirement being adding one litre of fuel. So strategy completely up to the drivers whether they take tires or not of course uh, air and track temperatures 26 degrees apiece so very hot for eight o'clock in the evening and uh, here we go with the correct standings this time from jesse lee so as you go at the head of your field on a nice round 100 points mike redford chasing up behind on 93 andy boardman of course not the best start to the season but found himself with 81 in p3 Grim Lilith not with us tonight that I've spotted on the board. So again, anybody behind Grim or ahead is going to extend that lead somewhat. Carlos Calata Yud followed closely by Yao Manzo, 53 and 46 points apiece. Jordan Daly tied with Martin Ulrich. Again, that's going to be an interesting fight. Ulrich on P2, Daly in P5. Christian Clipper with 37 and our very own Rob Franken with 28 points. Rounds out your top 10 in GT4. Moving on to the second page, Ted Edwards on 22. Our very own RCI Kevin Boss, of course, in the chat at the moment on 20. Mo Plate, two points behind on 18. Matthew Malcolm with 11, closely followed by Adam Carlisle on 10. Again, not seen Carlisle here tonight. So again, that'll be a good lead builder for Matthew Malcolm if they can keep it clean. Matt Stevens looking for a good haul of points. Currently P7 in the grid. So nine nine points on that one robbie kelly again at the head of the field going to net some points today hopefully on seven fossey tigress on four martin foster on three and denat kalmari rounds out your top 20 on a solo scoring point as we move on to page three now jordan bubbins with zero adam cowan with zero as well and uh, everybody else has signed out and will take no further part in the championship now, on to the M2, Spoda Skrillex and Raphael Huell at the top, 97 and 85 points apiece. Last Monday's champion, Nico Kumpu on 70, chased closely by Christian Linger, and it's almost like deja vu from the Ferraris at Bathurst on 68. Tom Shipston on 67 involved in this lot as well. And then we've got Les Stevenson in, in almost no man's land in P6. Aaron Jackson with 38, Alexander van der Voda with 35, Richard Phillips with 31, and Callan Kerrigan with 27, Rounds out your top 10 of the M2s. On to page two, Alexander Orlix on 22. Richard Withel close behind on 21. Matthias Byron on 16 with Christian Romano not with us tonight. Signed out, unfortunately, for this round on 15. Phil Roberts on nine. Tim Ireland on eight. Hubert Hauser tied with Neil Pimlock. I believe those two normally end up racing for the same team. So a bit of inter-friendly battle there. Marco Fukusho on six. And Keith Withel yet to score in P20. And moving on to one of the final pages, I believe uh, nobody on this page will take no further part in the championship standing. So one hour on the clock tonight, Ash, you know, seems like a, an awfully short time compared to some of the endurance events that we do run here. Of course, at RCI with World Tour being in just two weeks time. It's a sprint race at the end of the day. It's all about consistency, you know, making no mistakes over the hour. We've got the pinch point of turn one. And again, the M2s have to follow the GT4s through. So being in the M2 field could be the hardest part tonight. I believe 
Ash has just stepped away momentarily. Uh, but of course, this week, the uh, RCI calendar uh, looking a little bit stacked this week. We've got, of course, uh, midweek masters continuing on Wednesday, uh, heading to the Circuit of Americas for round four. RRP racing team Salvalut overtaking team Monkey Racing for the top spot and RPMS Simsport in close contention just behind the pro. Uh, meanwhile, in silver, it's uh, RPMS Simsport at the top again uh, with PR Racing and Racing. 25 years just behind i racing imsa season two begins this week as well heading to the temple of speed aka monza of course for season two we'll be returning to some of the most iconic tracks across europe but now uh, sorry some of the most iconic tracks across america but now featuring some of the greatest european tracks as voted for by the community round one of course taking place at monza Friday, of course, we'll begin our brand new championship. This is the uh, the GT2 uh, turn is back on the calendar again, of course, after low numbers for the KTM Masters. Uh, of course, uh, jumping back in GT2 machinery, already 27 signups for this one. And there is, of course, still space to sign up there yet, including round four taking place at the Nordschleife, of course, today's hot DLC release for ACC. Uh, you can, of course, head on over to the website, sign up and pre-qualify if required for any of these events at any time. That's racerci.com. And you can, of course, find all of our links down below. And I uh, just want to say a big thank you, of course, to you guys at home that make all of this possible, whether, of course, you're watching, lurking, racing, you know, just taking part in the community Discord. It's great to have you on board. And we have managed to reach four and a half thousand uh, subscribers on YouTube so what a great milestone that is for 2024 of course world tour ongoing on the website at the moment potential more events in the pipeline including of course something to do with the new DLC that's come out today but for tonight of course cars are gridding up two by two heading around turn 14 it's going to be a long kind of slow run to the line so maintaining tire and temperature is going to be crucial lots of brake riding probably going to be happening at the moment just trying to heat up the disc as much as they can of course uh, transfers out into the wheel through the tire carcass and builds pressure very nicely indeed very wide straight here of course at indianapolis at least four to five wide but you don't want to be going five wide into turn one as the array of headlights in in the background come around the banking and we are green for tonight of course kelly on the left hand side of your screen martin ulrich in the right we've got azure goat coming up the middle is going to make it three wide into turn one who's going to be the sensible one who's going to back out first looks like it's kelly early on the brakes very sensible move there gets to the apex andy borman around the outside ulrich is on the inside of goat maybe a little hip and shoulder check from the Janetta, but of course going to be on the outside line now coming on into the infield through turns three and four breaking almost while you're turning it's very tricky in some of these cars with the ABS systems they have. Andy Borman up the inside of Ulrich in turn four. That takes him to P2 by the time they get to turn five. And meanwhile, Azure Goat is out ahead, but uh, Martin Ulrich not letting that one lie. He's up the inside of Kelly. Of course, the inside will become the outside for turn six or 6A as I've got it marked down on my track map. Adam Cowan here at the back of the field. Something's happened to him in the early stage. And I think Denak Almari uh, there as well. Uh, not sure if anything has happened, actually. I thought we saw more M2s in that pack. But towards the front, again, Martin Ulrich, it looked like in the background. Carlos Calati who's trying to make up a position on Kelly. Daly just behind them as well is going to find themselves in the mix very soon. Actually, Daly's off to the right-hand side. That's a Camaro going off to drivers right into the Armco. That's a hard impact for the number 197. We're going to surely get a race replay of that one in a minute as the Caymans all flock together. Here we've got Kelly, Stevens, and Tigris all coming out onto the banking. Tigris up the inside, it looks like. Malcolm in the background, very late on the brakes. I'm not sure if there was contact or not. Christian Clipper with the old hip and shot to check towards Mike Redford and uh, Redford manages to hold on to P9. Christian Clippert down to P10 of course in the BMW M4. Emo Plate in the background rubbing his hands with glee if these two start fighting of course gonna pick up some important positions but just want to say Ash that looked relatively calm from the uh, from the opening lap but of course the M2s are now coming around onto the banking but everybody was well everybody got through without spinning I think but uh, 23 contacts, Ash, on the stewarding tool. Yes, I was uh, looking at the tool on my left-hand side there. It was uh, lit up like a Christmas tree through turn one and two. Uh, oh, there's uh, another car, another two cars on the grass there, John. 
And yeah, that's Nico, Nico Kumpu by the looks of it. Nico Kumpu and possibly one of the Alpines. That's either, that's going to be Kalmari possibly, or maybe even Bubbins actually in the number 65. Not, not too sure what's happened there, John, but I do think we're going to do a race replay very soon. Uh, here we are with the number 65. Oh, here's the race replay. Yeah, so going into turn one, looks like uh, Jordan Bubbins somewhere in the mix. Les Stevenson uh, there. It's already happened. It's already happened ahead by the time the uh, the replay has caught up. But of course, uh, Bubbins round looks like possibly Rob Franken out of position in P20 as well. Uh, just looks to the kind of top of the shot. Hubert Howes are very slow over the curb as well. Kind of condensed everything back up. And uh, yeah, just very, very tricky in general by the looks of it there. And we sneak around back onto lap two now. Of course, towards the front of the field, it is Azure Goat kind of galloping away as much as they can from Andy Borman in hot pursuit. Half a second to the good, but it's very close as we come onto the bank. And there's going to be perks of a slipstream here. Looks like Azure Goat just grazed the wall with that McLaren. That's going to allow Andy Borman to tuck right in behind and try and get the all important slipstream off the back of the McLaren of course Kelly the number 25 fastest lap of the race so far make sure both drivers manage to check up in time looks like Borman had a much size good line hit the curb and got a bit of a weird bounce but has closed up on the exit Rob Franken into the pit lane Ash I, th I think that's going to be day done of course the uh, pit window not even open at the moment to clear that mandatory stop you know it's very unfortunate there uh, a couple of incidents that have happened have caused uh, maybe a potential second retiree this race so far john uh, rob franken being the second casual say i do believe daly has already pulled down the garage door um and here into the race replay here yeah so we've got jordan daly in the background bumps ellie round and that's what happened carlos calati you got involved then foster of course nearly made up a position as well and somehow jordan daly of course exiting to uh stage right not sure what happened whether he just got frustrated and wanted to stop the car in the fastest way possible and of course back to the garage pulled down the shutter and i'm sure he's going to uh, be joining another launch life server very soon uh, to get that underway at uh, redford meanwhile on uh, christian clipper we caught this one in the final corner of course turn 13 into 14 a little bit of a hip and shoulder from the mclaren to the bmw there's probably green streaks of paint somewhere down the side of mike redford's door in the number 95 this time by we've got a another race replay from the m2s this time phil roberts uh in with matthias byron the sim brothers they're getting together as well phil with a big slide manages to hold it but that does give up two positions looks like kerrigan uh getting involved there as well to try and uh, capitalize maybe alexander orlix as well uh but byron does find his way up into p21 overall phil roberts p22 and of course we've got a, a bit of a mix of gt4s in with the m2s ted edwards of course p18 throwing the uh, scoreboard completely out of whack as uh, mike redford looks to the inside of vossi tigris into turn two we've got a porsche up on two wheels matt stevens as he dips a wheel in the grass comes back over the curb and nearly fires himself up and over but Cayman's looking very quick indeed. P5, 6 and 7 for the German manufacturer. And Mike Redford, of course, having it easy so far, should we say, with the BOP. I think he's uh, commented earlier in the uh, TCX chat that Indy isn't exactly on the McLaren's kind of strong suit. I think uh, breaking into turn one, he was quoted as saying, isn't ideal. Uh, but of course, as you go out front at the moment in a McLaren, so obviously doing something a little bit different to Redford as Redford ducks out down the uh, back straightaway, essentially into turn seven tries to open the door christian clippert now is going to be having a sniff through the chicanes of eight nine and ten the kind of switchback nature of these corners is single file only it's very tricky to find yourself offline and now matthew malcolm is going to be getting involved in the 199 just in the background this is all for that slot inside the top 10 we said it would be close ash in qualifying and it certainly is right now we've got a four five way fight forming on our hands as mike redford is towards the outside line into turn 12 is he going to get the car drawn up in in time there's dust kicked up he slots back in between tigris and clipper ready for another shot at it but mike redford looking very quick at the moment in the number 95. yeah he did very well there to keep the car in check um he helps we go to a race replay nico kumpu the 256 uh tries to make it stick on the outside and sadly there's contact and hip and shoulder check uh does very well not hitting the wall. Hubert Howes also managed to keep it on the straight and narrow. 
uh, moving back round and then we're just following them all clear round in the and I play currently with um, no headlights on which is uh, quite peculiar I'm not sure how the game hasn't uh, flagged that one up yet possibly maybe a server desync on our side it does happen sometimes here uh, on ACC I've uh, seen it many a time when you're spectating teammates during endurance races uh, so it could just be a little bit of a bug there but I'm sure he does have his lights on eight minutes in by now uh, he would have been given a penalty of some kind so uh, that's just a slight desync in the background of course we've got malcolm and yao manzo uh, coming together of course denak kalmari looking like he's lurking for a gain if this all goes sour of course yao manzo to the inside line uh, coming into turn seven there's a flash of the headlights there vossi tigris looks like he's come off the road the number 15 tig gang racing car to drivers right he finds himself now behind teammate denak kalmari so something's gone wrong for the number 15 of course not sure if stevens was involved again battling with the rpms number 77 came in again that could have come to blows there's nothing on our reporting tool so maybe just lost it all by themselves as carlos calathiot in the uh, giant mercedes benz uh, tucked in behind kelly in the number 25 again kelly not an ideal start had fantastic pace in the practice and qualifying just got off to a bit of a bad start there's a meatball flag uh, being waved in the background for someone maybe mo plates lights are completely off uh, I'm not too sure what's happened there, whether it's uh, another car there. Uh, it could just be a server desync, apparently Jesse Lee saying we have history uh, here at Indianapolis of that. So it could just be one of those. Quite peculiar um, by now, but Carlos Galatia on to the back of R. Kelly, of course, through the uh, first sector here through turn four and five as uh, the number 25 puts up a good fight of course trying not to be distracted uh, by Carlos Calatia trying to make use of the whole track as he uh, comes through turn five even dipping a wheel in the grass and that can be a track limit as I found out earlier on you dip a wheel in a bit over that curb and uh, that's going to be a track limit. Meanwhile, towards the front of the grid, Ash, we've got a three-way fight between Azure Goat, Andy Borman, and Martin Ulrich all forming. And we know how aggressive Andy Borman can be in these scenarios. So this is going to be a very good fight to keep your eye on. Yeah, you see he's pushing really, really hard on the back of Azure Goat. He, he must be licking his lips at this prospect of not having to fight daily for another round. Um, it's not going to get much easier battling with the with the goats. Um, back to what you were saying about the meatball flag, John. I think a couple of weeks ago at uh, Night Owl, half the cars on the grid got that same meatball flag at this track. I'm pretty sure it is a server issue. And uh, no, nothing much to worry about there. I don't think so, John. Yeah, it could just be uh, MO plate, possibly the uh, the desyncing car. Of course, the only one here tonight, nobody else really being shown with their lights off. Even uh, MO plate in my game uh, is showing with no headlights, so uh, I'm sure that is just a set uh, desync. Should fix itself, hopefully, when the pit lane opens. Of course, a uh, mandatory pit stop here tonight of 30 minute pit window. Uh, the only thing we ask you to do is chuck in a litre of fuel minimum. Uh, the rest is completely up to you, so maybe drivers on mixed strategies here tonight. Some drivers might take time some may not take tyres and again some could be running with about half a tank of fuel but the other half in later on with another set of tyres other drivers could be ready fueled up to the end and they're just going to come in minimize their time on pit lane and then come straight back out again here today replay from christian clipper himself and mike redford have been together but this is earlier on in the race uh, between mo plate giving him the little uh, kind of bump and run uh, through turn uh, 10 that is as they come out onto the long sweep of the bank and so ammo plate certainly looking like the uh, better car through the switchback natures of course the uh, mid-engine platform of the audi r8 a bit more nimble maybe on the switchbacks rather than the m4 of course big heavy front end on the m4 although it does drive superbly well uh, meanwhile we've got uh, nico kumpu this time on hubert hauser of course uh, nico trying to find his way back through the field after the earlier on incident in turn one 
uh, it's currently got to Hubert Hauser, looks towards the inside, and you can see there, if you break and turn in these cars, it, the whole front end just washes away, and you, you can't get it really turned into the apex, so you've really got to straighten the wheel out, especially in these BMW M2s and the M4, uh, it's quite problematic for it, breaking and turning, you see there, Hubert Hauser, the car just not wanting to find the apex of turn six, and that allows Nico Kumpu to try the old switcheroo through turn six A, out onto the back straight, of course, it's a very wide exit here, no track limits until you get to the grass so you can really abuse all of the extra laning Nico Kumpu is going to find himself on the outside now for turn seven last of the late breakers it looks like Kumpu's got the edge around the outside Hubert Hauser very cautiously towards the inside of the apex keeps it away from Nico Kumpu Kumpu up into P31 uh, probably going to be just outside the top 10 I imagine in class maybe P12 P13 uh, somewhere around there but it's going to be a big ask, of course, for Nico Kumpu uh, to make up some positions here. Of course, uh, P3 in the championship, Ash. This is going to be a round he, he's going to want to forget. Oh. Outbreaked himself, did Hubert Hauser there. Had no idea where the entrance to that apex was and completely locked up, almost sending himself onto the grass. Managed to save it right at the last second. As we move now up to Robbie Kelly and the battle for P3. He is just behind Ulrich. He's pushing really, really hard. I'm looking at the lap time deltas there. He is pulling quicker laps than, than everybody on the track today. He's looking around the outside, maybe, maybe having a sip on the switchback. Uh, slots himself in and he goes. And there's contact, John, there's contact. Yeah, contact between Ulrich and Kelly. That's not what we want to see. But of course, Carlos Calatiud rubbing his hands with glee as he slots the Mercedes up into P5, nearly splitting the two. But Kelly is still on the inside as they come through the swooper of turn 14 up onto the banking. Got to be careful of the Armco on the outside, tucking in behind Carlos, almost resorting to uh, NASCAR tactics with the bump drafting on the banking. But looks like Carlos is going to have to go the long way around. Of course, last of the late breakers has the Mercedes got the grunt, get the overlap i don't think it does the cayman up the inside far superior car gets it done on the inside of turn one carlos slots back in behind in p5 but of course ulrich has managed to escape a little bit up the road away from kelly so he's got some breathing room has ulrich it's about half a second or so as they come through the twisties of course the uh, janetta very good through the corners quite a light nimble chassis Almost kind of go kart esque handling as two cars Ooh. outbreak themselves into turn one. That's Cowan and Foster. And that is the crucial thing with these GT4s, of course, the ABS systems. We just saw, of course, Hubert Hauser do the same through turn six. Uh, you know, if you're breaking and turning in these cars, it's very, very tricky to get them pointed in towards the apex. Yeah, very difficult. Seems to be the running theme of tonight is the uh, the outbreaking situations. Sometimes the skill level just runs out, as I found out very often on the Nordschleife this evening. Yeah, so the uh, the Nordschleife are certainly taking no prisoners uh, in the RCI uh, practice server. Uh, earlier on a couple of half an hour races I, uh, I I took a part in it as well. It's a very tricky circuit to uh, be consistent at, but I'm glad it's here and I'm glad we're, uh, we're all enjoying it. So uh, fingers crossed, of course, we'll see that on an RCI one-off very soon. But if you do want to drive it here with us, of course, Friday's championship round four uh, will see itself at the Nordschleife. So that'll be in about three weeks' time if you want to take part in the GT2 season. Still spaces left on that one. Of course, uh, Midweek Masters on Wednesday uh, comes to their penultimate round. Uh, that championship's still wide open as well. And of course, iRacing on Thursday. So if you do want to get involved with us here, head on over to the website. That's racerci.com where you can find a full calendar breakdown, full season breakdown as well. And uh, just check out the offerings that we do have on here. As we see MO Plate, the first car down pit lane. Of course, the uh, pit window opened some one minute, 20 seconds ago. Down the pit lane, MO Plate comes. The uh, headlights have, of course, sink themselves back on. That's a very fast stop, Ash. I assume that's a, a one liter or maybe just a few more uh, dropped in the car off the jacks and away they go again. So MO Plate going to be essentially taking these tires all the way to the end now and uh, of course if anybody else takes a fresh set of tires could they then capitalize in the dying moments of course uh, track and air still quite warm at the moment 25 degrees in the air 25 degrees down on track so going to be good for building temperature in the tires but 
not so good of course like you said earlier if you're really pushing these Pirellis to try and get yourself towards the uh, front end of the field as uh, Jesse Lee comments how long the pit lane is here at Indianapolis and maybe that's why Emo Plate has chosen to chuck one litre of fuel in just so he minimises the time sat on this already long pit lane and here he comes out into the filter lane of turn one of course it's a very tricky filter almost cuts across the racing line but got to be uh, very sensible as you do come out and air on the side of caution a couple of m2s down the lane as well alexander van der Voda and tom shipston to name a few meanwhile vossi tigris after the mistake earlier trying to make up positions matthew malcolm on his sights next and christian clippert runs himself a bit wide he's now going to choke up matthew malcolm on the inside vossi tigris going to try and get the much better run through the last corner christian clippert on the outside that's not where you want to be but of course having a bad run through turn 12 and 13 that's hampered his kind of speed as he comes out onto the banking but you see the grunt of the bmw just pulling length slash we saw this we saw this at the red bull ring the m4 is an absolute monster on the straights and christian clippert certainly got that dialed in as a couple of cars checking up in the background it's nearly friendly fire from denak kalmari oh, on Vossi tigris matthew malcolm touches with the alpine through turns one and two and everybody back into single line of file and uh wow that was a very exciting fight all stemmed from christian clippert running a little bit wide yeah that had the potential there to be race ending for someone credit to all four drivers there they all managed to check up in time even with a little bit of contact uh and and did, yeah fall straight back in line as again clippert gets a very awkward exit there onto the straight but being the bmw i don't see that being too much of an issue yeah, you see there the, uh, the BMW just pulling the lengths off. Oh, contact in oh. the background. That's Denat Kalmari into the back of Matthew Malcolm, then into the side of Vossi Tigris and Christian Clipper. Both exit towards driver's right. And that's going to be a big time loss and some big damage as uh, Jesse Lee is queuing up the replay. Here it comes at you. Let's try and unfold what happened here. This all stems, this all stems back through turns one and two. So that's Malcolm on Kalmari as they come through turns one. One and two of course we've got christian clipper and vossi tigris uh, fighting up the road and uh, of course we do cut off before we get to the incident later on fingers crossed this should be the one that we want here it is denat kalmari in the background matthew malcolm ahead and looks like kalmari just completely forgot to break ash he, he had forgot to break or the brakes locked completely up either way that car was not coming to a stop and caused quite possibly the the, the the worst incident we've seen on track so far tonight, John. Uh, yeah, Christian Clippert now deciding to, to bring that car down pit lane. Suspectful, going to repair bin, a little bit of damage. Yeah, there's going to be some uh, big damage to the M4, including uh, Matthew Malcolm, of course, and uh, Denak Kalmari's front end isn't going to be looking too healthy either. Jordan Bubbins down the lane in the number 65 Alpine as he trundles on through. And uh, we've got action out on the track still between Ulrich and Kelly, the number 41 has given up that podium place to Kelly. Not sure what's happened or how it's been done, but the Cayman is now ahead of Pole Fast Motorsport, the number 41, of course, uh, Martin Ulrich. Becoming a little bit of a, a regular here at RCI, signing up to uh, quite a few of our events. And this is an alternate look this time from uh, Vossi Tigris, possibly. This is just a side-by-side -side contact flagged from Clipper and Tigris earlier on. Once again, we see the Caymans up on two wheels as they uh, duck over the curbing. And Malcolm has come out kind of ahead of that fight, should we say, of course, albeit very injured in the rear. And Vossi Tigris in the uh, hot pursuit should we say, of the number 15. Cowan has uh, managed to capitalise, of course, up a few positions, uh, bringing with him, of course, Foster, uh, Raphael Kuehl, of course, being the uh, first of your M2s at the moment. Christian Lingeren, 1.7 seconds behind, and then Les Stevenson, just half a second behind him. So, Spoda Skrillex, something's happened to him. And, uh, of course, uh, Callum Kerrigan as well. He qualified quite strongly, but not being seen in the top end of the BMW M2s. Alexander van der Vode there. A little bit of contact with the Alpine as Matthew Malcolm comes down pit lane. This is going to be probably a very lengthy repair. Get it drawn up super early for the line. And I think drivers today, Ash, after last week, are going to be airing on the side of caution with their pit entries. We, of course, saw a few drivers practicing them towards the end of qualifying. But 
quite a few penalties were handed out last week by the game, not by the stewards. Yeah, the uh, the pit board marker being missing that sweet calls absolute chaos down in pit road. Um, I have never seen so many penalties handed out for speeding in pit lane. Um, such an unfortunate incident that happened that caused that pit marker to be taken out. Um, it just goes to show that a lot of people not practicing the pit entrances and did not know exactly where to be having the car drawn up in time, John. Yeah, say so practice makes perfect. I mean, Wolf Matushka, uh, a name that's known quite well with us here at RCI. If you've ever watched him in a, a practice session, uh, he'll literally spend lap after lap after lap literally going for the pit entry and exit, trying to kind of, you know, maximize the uh, the amount of braking he can do before he, of course, nets the uh, speeding penalty. Andy Borman down the lane onto the pit limiter he goes. Of course, headlights dim down. Uh, for most endurance cars as they do come down the lane. Four-way flashes go on for Andy Corbin as he seeks to find his pit stall, pulling himself probably out of the traffic uh, at the moment. Of course, the uh, 765 has just began to hit the uh, back of the M2 class. And again, traffic giveth and traffic taketh away. So Andy Corbin going to see if he can now find a space for some clear air and nail in those lap times as we've got lots of uh, stewards reports coming through to us. Uh, you'll see a couple of penalties already being handed out on the left hand side of your screen so if a driver has already taken their pit stop so indicated by the green box next to their name such as uh, ted edwards down in p21 his 10 seconds will be added on to the uh, the final race time that he has so anybody behind him he's got to have a 10 second gap or he's going to be losing positions when the checkered flag comes out any driver that's picked one up before the mandatory pit stops of course will have that tagged on to their total pit stop timer so instead of being stationary maybe for 30 seconds it could be 35 seconds 40 seconds however harsh the penalty as we see a uh, race replay alexander van der voda on vossi tigris there and again a little bit of trading paint i'm sure if we walk down the pit lane we're going to see plenty of uh, traded paint as we go and again getting involved with uh, cowan uh, that was the number 47 again alexander van der voda in the uh in the bmw m2 uh we've got an incident lap one pitch straight involving the 65 and the 200 this is a bit of an odd one five seconds for the 65 for impeding the 200 on the start of the race i think that's the first time i've ever read of that penalty uh lap one turn two on the 60 and the 100 deemed a racing incident minor contact when they were three wide Lap one turn six involving the 30 and the 11. That's a minor contact racing incident. As we see Azure Goat now come down the pit lane uh, to take their mandatory stop, pulling themselves out of the uh, out of the, uh, the front running of the race. Sorry. Uh, lap one turn seven involving the 197 and the 25. It's a warning for the 197 for avoidable contact. Uh, lap one turn seven involving the 77 and the 30 racing incident minor contact. Lap one, turn seven, involving the uh, the 28 and the 46. It's a five seconds for the 28. That's a big impact there from Christian Clipper. Almost missed the uh, missed the corner if it wasn't for Bubbins, kind of helping himself to the uh, the door of the Alpine to uh, slow themselves down. Uh, Bubbins has reportedly uh, retired the car as well. So very unfortunate there as uh, as your goat gets back underway. Uh, lap seven, uh, sorry, lap one, turn seven, involving the 28 and the 46. It's a five seconds for the 28 for avoidable contact and lastly lap one turn nine involving the 202 and the eight it's a 10 seconds for the car number eight for overtake with severe contact and we nearly had severe contact there between the two front runners andy borman just about managed to pip azure go out of the pit lane of course the uh, timing board on the left hand side of your screen will update when they pass through the first sector but andy borman now getting held up by alexander van der Vode. he's got the wrong way there's a small gap for an aston martin can andy borman fit up the inside he can but then of course the inside becomes the outside for the next turn don't chop the nose off too soon or you may find yourself spun around and as you go witnessing this holding back a little bit cautiously just letting andy borman kind of progress his way through a flash of the lights there from van der voda possibly thinking that might have been a bit too aggressive but we saw how they came out the pit lane ash i think that's one of the closest pit exits i've seen here at rci it is turning out to be one heck of a battle today between Gorson Boardman. Uh, it's kind of been like it all season, really. Everyone's been at each other's throats at the top end of this championship. Uh, it just goes to show that there's uh, the, the race is on. The race is on. Uh, 
Boardman Pippin got on the pit entrance there. Uh, half a second split in between the two. These final 33 minutes, Sean, are going to be some entertaining prospect. Yeah, we're going to have to see how much Andy Boardman can uh, stretch the legs of the Aston Martin, of course. Uh, as your goat, maybe on slightly colder Pirellis than Bourbon. Bourbon has had the extra lap or two, of course, to uh, rework the temperature back into the tyre and get it back up to racing speed again. So Bourbon just with the far superior car at the moment in the early stages of these fights. Of course, as your goat, your championship leader on 100 points. Andy Bourbon down in P3 with 81 points. So he's going to want to try and take every single point he can get to get himself back to the top. Meanwhile, Christian Lindgren comes down pit lane. He's your provisional leader for the BMW M2s. If my eyes aren't deceiving me at the moment, they aren't. Again, lots of uh, cars have pitted. Raphael Huell uh, being one of them. Again, he was uh, quite strongly qualified. Again, Nico Kumpu has been turned around, so he's out of contention in the front runnings for the M2s as well. So uh, lots of things happening at the moment. Still plenty of cars. Top 10 in GT4 still haven't pitted. And uh, average pit time tonight looks to be around the one minute nine at uh, one minute 11. You look at MO plate, it was a one minute 11. Uh, your two GT4 leaders, so Borman and Goat, a one minute nine pretty much from pit in to pit out. So you can be sure that they've just dropped a liter of fuel in, no tires, and got themselves back underway because MO plate stop was very fast. I mean, one minute nine is a typical stop that we see at a normal circuit with a much shorter pit lane. But because the pit lane here at Indianapolis is so much longer, it gives the illusion that the, the pit stop has been much longer than it actually was a lot of the time. It's just been spent driving into the pits and, of course, then driving out of the pits as uh, we witnessed Christian Lindgren, of course, trundle down the pit lane on the limiter. 48 kilometers an hour seems awfully slow uh, when you're, of course, hearing everybody whizzing past on the banking. Got out ahead of Raphael Huell, of course, with a couple more cars, maybe between them, although I don't think so. I think that's just timing is yet to be updated. We've got a yellow flag out for the number 47 as well. Not sure what's happened there. That's down in the uh, last sector. That's uh, Adam Cowan for O'Hare's Motorsport. Let's get a race replay of that one. And we catch him just as he's already spun it round. Um, that's a very odd angle to, uh, to be sitting at there, Ash. Yeah, not a hundred percent sure what's what's actually happened there. Maybe a self spin, leaving himself in the grass, uh, and then further in the grass, trying to work his way back onto the track. There, credit to him though, he did wait until it was safe and clear to do so. Didn't impede anybody else's race. Uh, got himself back on track, and he's still sat there comfortably in P12, although he still has to make his pit stop yet, John. Yeah, still yet to make a pit stop. And uh, Robbie Kelly now comes down pit lane. He relinquishes the race lead to Martin Ulrich in the number 40. And uh, Carlos Calatia goes past as well, just in the background, the uh, white Mercedes. As Ulrich dispatches of Alexander Orlix. That's uh, down in P19 at the moment for the M2. It's about P3 overall in class for Orlix at the moment. So uh, a good haul of points nonetheless, although still a mandatory pit stop to take. Uh, half the pit window has gone just under 14, uh, just under 15 minutes even, sorry, uh, to go on the timer as Hubert Hauser now comes down the pit lane. He's going to relinquish quite a few spaces from the front. Pretty good run from uh, Hubert Hauser this week. Had a bit of a, a scary drama as the, uh, the kind of fights happened behind him. Of course, uh, understeered through uh, turn six pretty much all the way to the outside, but still managed to keep it clean. And uh, Mo Plate and Christian Clipper Meanwhile, now find themselves together. This is down towards the uh, the final end of the circuit. This is somewhere around turn, turn, uh, turn 11, turn 12, uh, coming in for the hard braking zone. Hopefully, uh, Clippert manages to uh, get the BMW drawn up in time, and we're probably going to see the legs of the BMW M4 once again stretch as MO Plate runs very wide in turn 12. Does cover off turn 13, although he's going to have dirty tyres for 14. Hopefully, he can get enough grip through the Pirellis to uh, get the car pitched in without scrubbing too much speed but here's the uh, german power plant firing itself up ammo plate already knows what's coming he's going over to pit wall side trying to break the toe of the m4 he's going to make christian clipper in the 236 go the long way around there's still a gap to the right hand side but wisely clipper pulls out to the left the audi r8 has just about enough to defend but can ammo plate get it drawn up he runs himself a bit deep into turn one but covers off the inside very nicely into turn two and ammo plate will hold on to p12 ash yeah, some lovely driving from the pair there. I think I did see a tiny little bit of contact from Clippert there on the back of MO. 
uh, handled it very well, didn't really upset either car too much and away they went, Adam Cohen there finally making his way down pit road through his pits and Matthias Byron now going down what seems to be the never ending pit exit here at Indy yeah, it's a super long lane, isn't it? I mean, I think I've even done a race here. And, uh, you know, you're just kind of daydreaming as you, you trundle on down at 48 kilometers an hour. Meanwhile, Christian Clipper fires it to the inside from a long way back, just tries to get it drawn up in time, and he can't get it drawn up enough into turn seven. Mo Plate goes back up the inside and retains P12. And this is a fantastic fight as well going on at the moment. But uh, just looking down the left-hand side of the board, as your goat has somehow got past Andy Boardman as well. And uh, Vossi Tigris in between the two. Andy Boardman 2.6 seconds down. Bear in mind, Andy Boardman was ahead of Azure Goat not too long ago. No contact being logged on our shielding tool at the moment. So uh, maybe Andy Boardman's just, just made a mistake, Ash. Yeah, I've been watching that, that time on my time and tool very closely. Uh, Tigress hasn't moved position yet. Gort and Boardman seem to have swapped positions. Uh, really confusing. Maybe Boardman's had a little bit of a spin. I, I, I honestly could not tell you what may have happened there, John. A bit of a weird situation as Martin Ulrich makes his way down the pit road. Um, I wonder if it's just going to be a spin. Contact uh, is it has been it was yeah. a little bit of contact. There was oh he does oh. Oh. I think Bourbon Bourbon came back on then Ash in yeah, turn twelve sliding all the way. Nothing he could have done and nose oh. to tail uh, nose to nose sorry uh, with Martin Foster. That's a big impact and such a weird place for that to happen. Bourbon's gonna be kicking himself, but you know, that explains why Tigris has managed to split goat. That explains why Bourbon is two positions down as well. And I'm sure the stewards are gonna be looking into that one. But uh somehow been delayed on our stewarding tool. So uh, probably in the queue of things for stewards to do, but Vossi Tigris covering off. Uh, that looks like uh, that's an M2, sorry, just in the background. I almost thought that was Christian Clipper, uh, but no endurance lights on that car, so uh, definitely an M2. Uh, Vossi Tigris, of course, to the back of uh, Azure Goat. Meanwhile, Matt Stevens comes out of the pit lane. Uh, not sure, was it Matt Stevens actually involved in that incident, or was it Foster? Because both cars are still, it was definitely Foster, I'm being told on my ears, because both cars looking very, very similar tonight for the RPMS team. Uh, meanwhile, Les Stevenson in the back here with uh, Matthew Malcolm behind. This is, of course, going to be a lap car scenario. So Malcolm very patiently waits for, uh, of course, the M2 to get around the final turn, knows that Mercedes is going to have the, the kind of legs, should we say, down the straight. Les Stevenson remaining very predictable, staying on the racing line all the way up to the wall. Uh, Matthew Malcolm, of course, pulls out to the right-hand side to overtake the M2. Uh, down into turn one this move should be signed sealed and delivered as they both break and that is a, uh, a master class of maybe how to deal with faster and slower cars meanwhile action down the pit lane carlos calata yud brings himself down the lane uh with another m2 in the background Jan manzo also in possibly uh richard no shoot the howls are still showing in the pit lane for me on my end there's definitely another m2 uh sat somewhere one wonder, wonder whether hauser has come back down hauser's come down for a drive-through actually on my board uh, just looking to the stewards reports at the moment uh, we do have a drive-through for the 79 actually so uh, we'll go from where i left off last time so uh, lap one turn 10 on the 100 and the 225 it's a warning for the 225 uh, lap two turn one involving the 65 and the 256 it's a drive-through for the uh, the 65 for a takeout of the 256 position not returned due to class difference uh, lap three, turn 14, involving the 256 and the 79. That's this man on your screen at the moment, Hubert Hauser. Drive through for the 79 for a takeout of the 256 with position not returned. So this is what we're going to see on your screen at the moment. Oh, that's, uh, that's a questionable one at most. Nico Kumpu trying to go the long way around. Just, just got caught by uh, Hauser's side of his car and 
Stuart, of course, going to be looking into that one much more than we have, of course, and analyzing stuff like telemetry, pedal inputs, uh, steering inputs, cars position on the road, where the car was positioned, you know, two, three, four laps ago. Was it consistent positioning from Hubert Hausman, of course, found at fault there. So that was a drive through penalty. Lap six, turn 10, involved the 236 and 71 racing incident. Lap eight, turn 13, involved in the 41 and the 25. It's a warning for the 25 for avoidable contact. Lap 9, turn 6, involving 71, racing incident, minor contact. No other car involved in that one. Uh, lap 9, turn 6, involving the 236 and the 222, racing incident, minor contact. And uh, lap 11, turn 2, involving the 54 and the 199. It's a warning for the 199 for avoidable contact. Uh, meanwhile, in the pit lane, Mike Redford has come down to take his mandatory stop, meaning there's only three cars now in the top 10 yet to take their stop, and Vossi Tigris being one of them. Ash, I'm sure he's going to be putting off that pit stop because he knows that Cayman is ever so slightly damaged, and he's just managing to work with it at the moment rather than lose time coming down the lane to fix it. Yeah, I've got a feeling there's going to be a lengthy stop there if he does decide to fix the damage. Hopefully he can carry on driving and not have to do that damage. It just doesn't seem possible. Yeah, it's going to be a, a big ask from the uh, from the Tick Gang Racing Team, the number 15 now down the pit lane. Uh, this will cement one of the last GT4 pitters, of course. Um, Mike Redford being shown in pit lane, but has since come out. And Matt Stevens for the RPMS team will be your only car left to pit. Martin Ulrich has managed to retain the race lead somehow ash the uh hold fast motorsport car the number 41 comes out ahead of mike redford i'm just trying to look on the map where the number 95 actually is and they're coming through turn three or four at the moment of course as your goat is the uh the next car on the road the uh, number 765 uh, he's finding himself in a bit of an m2 sandwich at the moment uh, between Raphael Huell and uh Spoda Skrillex again those two fighting for essentially their own championship so as your coach is going to be wanna going to be wanting to uh, get out of this one very fast indeed but uh, Martin Ulrich superb stop down the pit lane uh, just looking towards my uh, timing tower to see how fast it was a one minute nine so it was on par with uh, what Azure Goat and Andy Bourbon both managed between them so very clean stops from everybody tonight certainly looks like the uh, pit stop practice has been uh, paying off uh, Azure Goat 7.4 seconds meanwhile Emo Plate has stopped on the circuit that's a that's a strange place to stop Ash let's get a, a race replay what happened here wondering if there's some kind of hardware issue here uh, seems a very odd place there seems like everything just shut down there the car is now no longer turning it definitely seems like some kind of hardware issue was playing demo plate there very strange looks like he almost like lost power through turn six on um, the transition to, to 6a of course christian clipper giving him the bump to get him kind of propelled along and and my plate now back to the pit lane. I'm wondering, did he forget to put any fuel in during his pit stop? We did say it was an awfully fast pit stop uh, on the uh, IMSA performance number 71, but very strange to see whether or not that was a hardware failure. Uh, like you say, Ash, we do see it quite commonly here uh, in ACC. Again, it's almost akin to the uh, to a mechanical breakdown uh, in real life. And uh, just trying to look at the uh, Motec to see what's going on. But of course, uh, limited data being sent from car to server and uh, to the spectators. So very unfortunate. We can't take an educated guess up here. We're going to have to see if we can get a, a word from MO Plate. Les Stevenson, meanwhile, will come down the lane from the race lead of the uh, BMW M2 class. Alexander Orlix, of course, uh, the only other car on the field alongside Matt Stevens yet to pit. So three cars still to do their mandatory pit stop. Um, and of course that will shuffle the number 46 driver back down the order somewhat we'll have to see who has taken over the race lead of the m2 class ammo plate still in the pit lane meanwhile of course losing uh losing places as he goes down the order as the m2s of course whiz past on the racing line very unfortunate there such a good run from ammo plate just outside the top 10 Looked like he really had the Audi dialed in, managed to fend off uh, the charging Christian Clipper, even in a slipstream uh, down the uh, main straight into turn one. And this is where we see, of course, Les Stevenson hemorrhaging time at the moment as he's uh, trundling down pit lane on the right hand side of his screen. Of course, Christian Lindgren uh, goes through there into the race lead once again. So 
because uh, Stevenson will take the uh, probably around just inside the top 10, I'd say around maybe P5, P6, as the uh, timing tower will update itself once here out of the pit lane, and we can have a, a nice guess of where the uh, Roker Poker has come out. P20 uh, overall, so uh, that looks like it's just uh, just ahead of Matthias Byron in the number 100. Spoda Skrillex in the 200 uh, should, in theory, be ahead of Les as uh, we come around the uh, first sector. Of course, wait for the first timing gate to uh, to update itself as uh, we pass through turn six. Uh, it should be updated by the time we get to 6A. There we go, tumbling down the order. So uh, we've got Christian Lindgren at the head of the field. Raphael Huel just behind and Spoda Skrillex, the number 200. Of course, looking to uh, capitalise lots of points today. Of course, at the head of the field, Ash, at the moment, 97 points clear. Raphael Huel is the car on his heels with 85 points. So as long as Skrillex can get through Huel, this should be a very comfortable finish indeed. Yeah, they're getting quite quite close racing here oh, you could you, you knew there was something happening there both cars again credit to both drivers being drawn up in time uh no flash of the lights in apology although he did fall back after making that mistake john yeah skrillex went for the gap didn't he, he ran very wide uh through the s's section of course of turn nine into 10 gave the hip and shoulder check knew he'd done wrong Skrillex lifted completely out of the throttle and uh, gave the position back meanwhile we see oh that's Ted Edwards trying to find a Camaro sized hole that was ever so closing and Denet Kalmari credit to him on the fast hands today managing to catch the Alpine as he uh, slides through the grass and it could be very messy indeed meanwhile Robbie Kelly uh, onto the back of Andy Boardman, uh, closing up the gap all the time. 0.275, a little bit of traffic ahead in the form of an M2. That's the number 157 around the outside into turn four. It's a very brave move indeed, putting a lot of trust on the driver on the inside, but minimal time loss for the Cayman driver there. He can set his sights towards, uh, of course, Andy Borman. Carlos Calata Yud as well, bottom step of the podium at the moment, and just ahead is Azure Goat. So this kind of fight is this four five way this is a four way fight forming we've got at the moment uh, flash of the lights there from Azure Go on Cowan uh, Cowan pulls way off to uh, driver's left to allow Azure Go through will Carlos get through he does Andy Borman also finds his way through and Kelly as well so the four from second to fifth Ash at the moment are covered by less than a second or so yeah it's a nose to tail driving here John I've got the feeling that this race is definitely not over for any driver P2 is open from P2 to P5. It's anybody's game here. Uh, Martin Ulrich does seem to have driven away with the uh, potential race victory here. 10.8 seconds separating Ulrich to Goat, and that gap just seems to be getting bigger with every lap that passes, John. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Ulrich, of course, relatively unfazed at the head of the field. All he's got to really do is drive around the M2s and keep it very clean indeed. You can see they're going into turn one as the uh, the, the second to fifth gang, shall we say, uh, all come off of the uh, banking onto the main straight. And, of course, Carlos Palacio is out ahead of it. Again, no stranger to being in these pressurised situations. The rebound racing driver, Andy Borman, very confident on the brakes in the Aston Martin, nearly manages to find a, a hole in the inside of Carlos and uh, of course as you go just at the head of the field there is almost like the cork in the bottle at the moment he's he's the blockade that's kind of you know bunching these guys up Boardman in the middle he wants to get a move on he wants to try and net some more championship points of course Carlos Calatiud no Grim Lilith here tonight so they want to try and get as many points as they can to uh, get past of course the uh, number 511 it's 60 points Grim Lilith to 53 of Carlos Calatiud and of course as you go out front with 100 points Martin Ulrich down in P8 at the moment tied with Jordan Daly again Daly early retiree from the race so it's going to be a good haul of points for Martin Ulrich as Andy Boardman looks to the outside in turn seven nothing to be had there Mercedes parked on the inside of the apex we know it's only one line through turns eight nine and ten and the next braking move is going to be essentially uh, into p12 as we turn right heading back towards the uh, pit lane Kelly not close enough to make a move at the moment and uh, it looks like possibly Matt Stevens has forgotten the mandatory pit stop tonight in the number 77. Yeah, very odd that most drivers have come in. Uh, I think, uh, has the pit window closed, John? 
Uh, Jesse Very Lee is whispering in our ears that the stop was made. However, it was invalid, John. Yeah, one minute eight uh, pit in to pit out. So, I mean, it's about in the realm of where the uh, the top runners were making their stops. Of course, one minute nine uh, is one of the uh, faster times. One minute eight point eight. Uh, so I'm not sure what happened with Matt Steams. I'm sure we'll get a, a word after the race or if any of the RPMS crew are in the chat, if they could let us know, that would be uh, great. But very odd, of course, the uh, the game ACC, if you're not familiar with it, does flash quite a lot of warnings at you that you do have a, a mandatory stop to take. Of course, the, uh, the rule set has been the same throughout the championship. So we haven't chopped and changed the rules. It's always been a mandatory stop in a 30 minute pit window, one liter of fuel, tires completely up to the driver. So very strange what's happened to Matt Stevens there. We know ACC has been a bit buggy with some pit stops. Uh, we've of course seen the uh, the famous shuffle back from Ted Edwards the other week. Uh, we're all in a uh, staff chat analyzing Ted's pit stop and pulled into the lane, up on the jacks he went, back down he went, went to reverse and somehow shuffled himself completely out of contention and uh, then couldn't make the pit stop happen again so um of course very peculiar indeed uh, but if we can find out what happens to matt stevens we will certainly bring it to you as uh, we have a look here at the battle of course uh, carlos calati is still with azure goat towards the front it looks like kelly's pace is dropping off ever so slightly uh, of course uh, andy borman in the number 69 in the middle of this all gonna have a mirror full of the cayman and uh, a windscreen full of Carlos ahead and Cayman certainly looks very good through the corners but Borman is doing just about enough I think to hold on whether or not it's the uh, kind of toe from the Mercedes just pulling him along at the head of course wanting to, uh, to work together as Ro uh, Robbie Kelly there drops a wheel in the grass coming out onto the bank and that's going to slow some kind of progress down we've got a couple of M2s ahead could that be the uh, the factor they need to uh, maybe get the uh, positions here shuffled about but Time is ticking, Ash. Just over 10 minutes now. Borman runs too deep. Kelly also runs too deep as well. And it's it's tip it's tip for tap. Kelly doesn't manage to make up the position. Borman holds on, loses a chunk of time to Carlos, but still the positions remain. And I was about to say, time is running out, Ash. Just over uh, 11 minutes on the clock. What do you do in this scenario? Do you you know do you try and work with Boardman to see if you can get any further or do you just try and sack Boardman off go for a brave lunge and, and just see how far you can get solo of course but you don't want to squabble too much because could you could you uh, could you trip each other up well Kelly there looked guilty of something I do all too often which is following the car in front uh, it's, it's it's sometimes it can help uh, other times it can be a big hindrance as we found out there as they entered and both went exactly wide um speaking of things not going to plan i've got some news maybe from gary here in the chat it sounds like mr stevens pitts was added after the timer where he completely forgot to have fuel john yeah, it could be either or, couldn't it? It could be either he's, he's run out of time and, of course, not come down the lane in the time. Or he could have, of course, uh, he could have, of course, just forgot to put the fuel in. As we see a race replay here, this is as your goat. This is on Cowan. This is a very big send down into turn one. I mean, the gap was only ever going to close. So maybe getting a little bit desperate, the 765. And that could be where the big time loss was. And, of course, Carlos Calatia bringing the train with him of Andy Borman and Kelly in the number 25 as they come down towards the first turn there. Fantastic view from on board the uh, 570S GT4. Carlos, of course, hustling the Mercedes very well indeed. Excuse me, I caught him on the uh, the Nordschleife server earlier on driving the, uh, the Mercedes. So certainly have plenty of practice in this car for the uh, rebound racing number, uh, number 30. Uh, on that one Andy Borman in the background meanwhile trying to find a gap for the Aston he opens the door a little bit too much that's going to allow Kelly towards the inside a flash of the lights there from Carlos he's not happy about being chopped off the outside becomes the inside for uh, Andy Borman and side by side with the Cayman they come out of 6A just about enough grunt in the Aston Martin to pull it ahead of the number 25 but you can see Kelly now is getting very desperate he wants past Andy Borman he wants that Hall of Championship points and he wants to have a stab at Carlos if he can get near him and of course as you go ahead needs to kind of drive flawlessly at this point because one mistake ash and it's all going to come unravel because three cars behind you within a second that's going to be very detrimental in 
indeed as uh, Raphael Huel and the number 157 here come to blows through uh, turn 6A and nearly getting tripped up there. That's, uh, I think, Christian Lindgren, the race leader in the number 48. Uh, that's possibly how he's taking the race lead, maybe away from Raphael Huel, because I'm pretty sure Huel was ahead uh, after the pit stops. So Christian Lindgren capitalized there. And of course, that brings Huel back with Skrillex again as they follow the uh, snaking train. And Les Stevenson, Ash, is in behind as well. So he's maybe set for a podium finish in the uh, M2s today. Yeah, the Roker Poker having an absolute amazing race once again. Uh, within a year shot of being on that podium again, you know, just extending work from Wednesday he fell away from the pit stop and has managed to pull the time back uh, and now he's only around about six uh, three to three to four tenths behind sport of Skrillex uh, everything to play for yeah, everything to play for indeed as Spoda Skrillex in the uh, in the slipstream of uh, Raphael Huel down into turn one, of course. Uh, Spoda Skrillex on the left-hand side of the screen. Raphael Huel on the right. The outside will become the inside for two if they can make it stick. Both drivers managed to get it pulled up in time. It looks like Skrillex was a little bit cautious there. Huel had a wiggle through turn one. And if Spoda just nailed the throttle, he would have had the overlap going into two. And that could have been race uh, position two for Skrillex. And of course, uh, Huel down to P3 and into the clutches of Les Stevenson. Meanwhile, Les is just kind of patiently waiting at the back, a very sensible kind of heads up driver. He's going to know something's unfolding between this. And it's uh, two different three car battles going on at the moment. One at the head of the GT4 field, one at the head essentially of the M2 field as well. And Carlos looking very late on the brakes, closing up to uh, Azure Goat there through turn 12, the switchback for 13. Going to try and tuck himself into the slipstream. Meanwhile, Spoda Skrillex looks to try and make a move. Les just holds the racing line very patiently, very sensibly indeed. And you can see how much the uh, the gap has closed between Les and Spoda Skrillex as they come through the switchback nature of 8, 9 and 10. As uh, a penalty has just flashed up for Denek Kalmari. Uh, that's going to be a drive-through. So we're going to scramble to find the uh, stewards' reports to see uh, what has happened on that one. But... Still line of stern at the front of the field. It looks like Carlos is closing up on as you go through the first couple of turns. This could be the uh, Shewis decision here. It looks like all oh, Aaron Jackson into the side of Cal Mari. Uh, let's have a look through the Shewis report, see what we have here. So lap 11, turn six, involving the 15 and the 236 racing incident minor contact. Lap 11, turn eight, involving the 199, the 54 the 236 and the 15 if you remember that was the multi-car pileup with matthew malcolm just a few laps ago uh, that was deemed drive through for the 54 obviously for a multi-car takeout uh, all positions were given back though so maybe a drive through was the uh the, the less harsher side of the penalty as uh, denat kalmari comes down the lane to uh, serve that one uh, headlights already turned off very uh, mysteriously there maybe some kind of initial d move uh, where we don't see denat kalmari into the pits but trundling down the uh, pit lane denat kalmari will come now and uh, back to the fight at the front of both fields as we see uh, nico kumpu making up a position on matthias byron he's had a very good fight back ash you know cast your mind back to uh turn one we saw uh nico kumpu facing backwards we've then seen him sideways in the armco of uh turn 14 and he's now essentially uh up into p5 of the m2 class so a very good uh damage control run should we say uh, sorry about that there, John. I did get interrupted. My lovely little daughter decided now was a good time to come bombarding through the uh, the broadcast booth there, stomping her feet and shaking her hair. <sighs> You'd have to catch me up there, please, John. I was just saying, uh, sorry, Nico Kumpu, of course, uh, turn round in turn one. Uh, we've seen him sideways in the Armco at 14, but up into P5 of the uh, M2 class. A great kind of damage control race should we say from uh, Nico yeah brilliant recovery drive there from Nico absolute fantastic uh, it's shown time and time again that he oh as we see a car backwards there on the track I didn't quite see the number there John 
Uh, I think that was the uh, number 44 of Martin Foster uh, down in P14 at the moment overall. Managed to avoid uh, the kind of battle that we've got going on at the moment between Azure Goat, Carlos Kalatiot, Andy Boardman, and Robbie Kelly as Carlos makes contact oh. with the back of Goat. Boardman goes through the middle of them. That's going to bring with him Kelly as well. And Carlos has eased up, and I'm, I'm sure Carlos is going to give the position back, but looks like he tried to break that little bit too late. Just comes steaming in, Ashen. The ABS, of course, while we're turning, we uh, spoke about it earlier, not the best in these GT4 cars. They're not a good car to uh, try and trail break into the apex. And I think Carlos has given that position up. He has just behind bottom left-hand side of your screen. There is a Mercedes uh, behind the advertising. And uh, this is the uh, additional contact, apparently. Oh, looked like Azure Goat was trying to uh, speed up to catch Carlos and just carried a little bit too much speed and found himself nearly into the back of Carlos. But position given back nonetheless but Bourbon promoted up into p2 kelly into p3 as your goat will still keep p4 and carlos calatiad five uh not five seconds sorry half a second over uh, just behind as your goat so i don't think he's going to get the position done now two and a half minutes on the clock of course one minute 44 a lap so roughly two uh, laps remaining at the moment so the battle we have now is between kelly and Boardman. they've been kind of line of stern throughout the whole kind of second half of this race says that's rafael Huel running himself too deep that's spoda skrillex now promoted up into p2 that's going to be detrimental for the championship fight and les stevenson for the number 46 the fat stick racing is trying to capitalize as well on the inside of Huel. Huel finds himself just undoing all his work but les stevenson gets a slide onto the bank and that's going to allow Huel with another run at the number 46 bump drafting their way i would say near enough down the uh, down the main straight here the m2 spare parts been certainly going to be raided uh today at bmw as these guys come off the track but les needs to get it drawn up in time for turn one and he does just about huel kind of takes a much tighter line tries to do the old up and under through turn two into three and four he's gonna have to go the long way around into four nothing to be had les covers it off very nicely indeed i think these guys are gonna have this lap and the next one to go quite possibly and uh it's still anybody for uh taking here this is uh, essentially for p3 of the m2 category a couple more stewards warnings on the board at the moment lap 12 turn 8 involving the 38 and the 15 it's a warning for the 38 for avoidable contact second warning for the 38 this race so that's a five second penalty that's alexander van der voda uh, we've got a race replay here of Ted Edwards flashing furiously at Matthias Byron and uh, Ted just wandering into the side of the number 100. That's very peculiar indeed. And Byron there with a flash of the lights, not too happy about what has happened there. Uh, we've got a lap 13, turn 13. Unlucky for some, they say. Uh, number 47 and the 38 racing incident minor contact. We then got a M2 parked in turn one. Not sure what was happening there. It's not on the penalty report at the moment but we'll find out i'm sure in due time about that one uh, lap 14 turn one involving the 236 and the 65 no further action 65 parks it and retires to the garage i think that was jordan bubbins earlier on if memory serves me correctly and then we've got a lap 17 turn 13 involving the 69 and the 44 so that was of course the uh, the uh, andy boardman and martin foster incident that we saw earlier on uh, 69 turns across the 44 causing themselves to spin so no further action on that one and lap 17 turn 13 among the 44 and the 69 it's a warning for the 69 for an unsafe rejoin and matt stevens capitalizes a place on carlos calatagird although all in vain because an after race penalty will probably be, com be coming in for matt stevens for officially not taking his mandatory stop which is a bit peculiar on the number 77 our pms entry and uh, I believe we are on the last lap of the race. I'm just trying to spot where Martin Ulrich is. He has actually finished. The clock was zero when he crossed the line. So Martin Ulrich for the number 41 Holdfast Motorsport will be your victor here tonight at Indianapolis in the GT4 class. Fantastic race for the Janetta driver. A flash of the lights there from Andy Borman and Kelly. It was very close indeed, but Andy Borman just about holding on point 0.186 to the good as you go will come through in p4 again what could have been had they not been caught up in the incident with carlos calatio very unfortunate matt stevens nets himself 130 second penalty so the next screen we show will be the uh, final results of course he'll shuffle himself down the grid 
Carlos Calata Yud will promote to P5, Yamanzo up, and so on and so forth. Uh, Mike Redford is set for a P8, should uh, the board update, and it does indeed. But it looks like Christian Lindgren, the number 48 Sim Brothers racing car, the BMW M2 CS, finds their way through the final sector. Just in the background, Spoda Skrillex, 2.2 seconds to the good. Unfortunately, not enough today for the Austrian driver, what could have been, but a good result nonetheless. Christian Lindgren will come across the line, and he takes first place in the TCX category, followed by Spoda Skrillex, 2.4 seconds to the good. Somebody in the background there bouncing off every single wall looks like ted edwards possibly in the chevrolet camaro les stevenson will come through in p3 he's managed to hold off rafael huel so absolute stinker for huel there that's going to be a big loss of points in the championship title matthias byron will come through hopefully the next car down the line it is the number 100 uh, he will find his way down the lane as well as uh, drivers elect to uh, try and run the uh, the Indy 500, but backwards, uh, turning right only, and of course find themselves a nice wall at the exit of turn one. Ted Edwards' 10-second uh, penalty uh, converted into a 70-second penalty, of course, with the uh, not being able to take it down the uh, down the pit lane, should we say, as he uh, had already cleared his mandatory stop. That was a drive-through, John. Oh, that could explain the uh, the frustration of bouncing off the walls at the end, then if Ted yes. Edwards picked up a very late drive through. So that 24 turn 12 incident involving the 38 and the eight drive through for the car number eight take out position not returned. Very well spotted there, Ash, on the stewards reports. We do have a post-race report as well. Uh, incident on lap 32, turn eight involving the 30 and the 765. That's Carlos Calatayud and Azure Goat. It's a drive through for the number 30. Very unfortunate. So, discount Carlos out of these results because he will also be shuffled down promoting Yao Manzo probably up a position along with Mike Redford and maybe Christian Clipper I don't want to be too sure yet uh, but of course we'll bring you the full championship results next week final results on your screen of course pending any further penalties to be added after the game Martin Ulrich of course taking the GT4 victory Andy Boardman and Robbie Kelly just about holding on for the steps of the podium behind and of course down into the BMW M2s it's Christian Lindgren bending off Spoda Skrillex and Les Stevenson the dark horse of today on the bottom step of their podium as well so good championship points all, all around uh, Phil Roberts unfortunately did not finish in the uh, the TCX class and we had a few DNFs of course in the GT4s one of which of course MO Plate Jordan Bubbins Rob Franken and Jordan Daly to name those so again that's going to be some championship points lost Matthew Malcolm in the chat saying that was a struggle so uh, maybe not gelling quite well with Indianapolis but finishing just inside the top 10 P9 even with the big accident we saw earlier on as well so kudos to you there Mr Malcolm on that result very well done indeed we'll of course bring you all the uh, championship updates next week here on RCI TV and we do have a very packed calendar this week on the website if you haven't already seen it racerci.com Midweek Masters, of course, continues on Wednesday, heading to the Circuit of Americas for round four. Both championships still very, very close on that one. iRacing begins on Thursday. That's IMSA Season 2, uh, heading to the Temple of Speed, also known as Monza. Uh, season 2 will, of course, be returning to some of the most iconic tracks across America, but now featuring some of the greatest European tracks as well, uh, voted in by the community. That begins on Thursday. Friday, we'll begin our brand new championship this week uh, after the uh, low numbers for the KTM Masters. We've listened to the community and switched it up, jumping back into GT2 machinery. Uh, already 27 signups for this one and still space yet. Round four taking place at the Nordschleife, of course, today's hot uh, DLC release for ACC. So if you do want to get yourself some GT2 Nordschleife action, give it three weeks and that calendar will roll around for that one. And a big thank you, of course, to you guys at home, because none of this would be possible without you, whether, of course, you're racing, watching, lurking, whatever you're doing here at RCI, we appreciate each and every one of you. And, of course, if you do want to get involved with us here at RCI, we do have a staff vacancies board, so you can certainly get yourselves uh, into that one. We're looking, of course, for uh, broadcasters, stewards, and commentators, so if you do want to get involved, then head on over to the Discord find the staff vacancies have a little read through see if it suits you and come join us on rci tv or behind the scenes even at rci 
And lastly, but no means least, of course, a, a big thank you to our partners that make all of this possible. Of course, uh, AK Esports, a leading Italian company in esports management and organization across the world. Founded in 2005, but has since found success in the esports world, debuting their first official Porsche Esports Championship and has since found success with SRO Motorsports Group and Delara, among many other brands, including us here at RCI with our fantastic server solutions. Driver61.com, where you can, of course, get 25% off your driver coaching by using our discount code uh, with a link down below in the description. Fanatec, again, needs no introduction to who these guys are, one of the leading brands in dedicated sim racing hardware, and we do have an affiliate link down below. So if you are looking to pick up any new hardware in 2024, of course, uh, use our link, sprinkle a few pennies in the RCI pot, and we'll be most grateful. And two new partners, of course, that joined us last year, including into the uh, walk of the world of esports uh, paid championships, uh, digitalmotorsports.com, offering a number of products and services, right from virtual driving experiences all the way up to complete sim rig solutions. Founded in 2018 by two enthusiastic motorsports fans, they had a vision to create Ireland's leading digital motorsport environment and resource. Visit the link down below if you believe they can help you at all. And lastly, again, Go Setups, uh, formed to be one of the premium esports setup stores uh, for ACC, with their primary aim to create setups for all skill levels, of course, whether you're esports ready or just looking for a safer alternative for your favorite car. Head on over to them. If you do want to get involved with their setups, no Nordschleifer setups yet from them, but they are more than likely in the pipeline. And they are doing a giveaway at the moment to win one of five Nordschleifer DLC packs. So if you haven't yet bought it and you fancy a free copy, head on over to their Discord and get involved in that one. But from us here tonight at RCI TV, it's been a fantastic event. We've seen some great driving from, uh, actually being told of my ears, Les Stevenson here for an interview, maybe. Les, Hello, can chaps. you confirm? You are here. <laughs> I am here, yes, I am. You are here, lovely. Um, we just watched you pretty much kind of lurk, uh, lurk around just outside the, uh, you know, inside the top five, should we say, and then suddenly you find yourself on the uh, bottom step of the podium over the moon john absolutely over the moon no it was a it was a great race and and uh i was just sort of like you said lurking just waiting for something to to materialize the, the pace was was there to sort of being in and amongst uh the top guys and i just knew if i waited long enough my time would come i wasn't quite quick enough to to make the overtake so i had to wait for a mistake and thankfully that came my way and in, in in the fashion of uh rafael Gu, who unfortunately went a bit wide and I was able to capitalise, so uh, yeah, no, I'm really pleased with it, to be honest. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, a lot of drivers actually struggling with um, trail braking in these cars, of course. Uh, very different to uh, GT3 cars that you're used to driving, of course, plenty of downforce, lots of grip. M2s are a little bit more drawn back, of course, you're relying much more on the uh, physical grip coming out of the tyre. Of course, temperatures quite warm here tonight any issues with with tires what you know what was your strategy we, we saw a lot of drivers minimizing uh pit lane time tonight was it just a, a one liter and go or did, did you do anything different no i did do uh something a bit different to normal i um i decided to go uh, a bit lower on the fuel start uh with the aim to try and sort of uh eat the tires a little bit better than than I did in practice. I spent, I'll be honest with you, I spent quite a bit of practice uh, to see how these tyres would last. And every single practice session I did, that front left was, uh, well, it was a molten mess. And um, I just knew that if I didn't go a lower fuel, then I wouldn't be able to keep the pace up for the entirety of the race. So, well, without taking tyres, which I definitely didn't want to do. So, if I could help it anyway. Um, but yeah, no, really, really pleased. Like I said, I. I, I went for a 46, uh, 40 20 sorry, uh, on the fuel. And but it's interesting you talk about the break, the braking. I did spend a lot of time for this practice, learning the braking uh, procedure because I, I'm a big fan of adjusting brake bias. Uh, and in this car, you have no adjustment on the brake bias in the car, so it's stuck at 56, and that's what you got to deal with. And um, yeah, it took me quite a bit of time to to get used to the uh, the, the the trail braking. Uh, aspect of, of the braking phase and I think the practice paid off. Practice makes perfect I think as they say sometimes. Um, 
RCI's website is updated uh, with the championship standing, so you currently find yourself in P5, uh, not too far behind Nico Kumpu for P4. Uh, top three guys all reaching into the 100 zones now, so looking quite close at the top. Um, anything, you know, you're going into the final round, of course, uh, Alton Park, kind of home-ish territory, should we say, of course, uh, in England. Uh, anything you're looking forward to at Alton? You know, how, how do you fare there? Is it a circuit you enjoy or...? I'm dreading Alton. I absolutely dreading Alton. Alton is my nemesis track. It, it's just one of them tracks I've just never really had any luck out whatsoever. If I don't get taken out, I make a stupid mistake like I did in the Night Owl uh, series on Saturday. You know, I was having a great battle with uh, with the leader of my class and I just ran out of talent into Druid. So um, if I can actually keep together, uh, it could be a good race. Um, but it's all... That tra me and that track just don't gel. We just do not gel whatsoever, but fingers crossed, it all goes well. And so finishing the top five of, you know, what we, what we call the pro category, I am over the moon. I mean, I, my aim at the start of this season was top 10. So to be in the top five, that would be, that would be a really, really good, good result for me. Very strong result indeed. If you're only aiming for, for top 10, certainly going above and beyond. Um, fingers crossed, Les, next week, uh, Alton Park goes your way. Uh, just before we let you go, uh, any anyone or anything you want to shout out? Uh, I'm going to shout out my, my father-in-law. Unfortunately, he's had a bit of an incident today and uh, he's managed to fracture his hip. So uh, all the best uh, to, to my uh, my father-in-law, Jeff Yerson. And if you are listening and watching, um, all the best and and good. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, yeah, all, all the best of luck in, in the hospital and with the fingers crossed for the surgery tomorrow. So, but yeah, that that'll be my uh, that'll be my shout out for today. Yeah, so um, best wishes from uh, all of us here at RCI as well for a, a speedy recovery there. Uh, thank you very much for uh, dropping in, Les. We appreciate it's getting late in the UK, of course, with uh, losing the one hour over the weekend in daylight savings. Um, so we'll let you get off and uh, we'll get this one wrapped up. Yeah, thanks, guys. I mean, obviously, in the UK, we, we do have it so much worse with the time difference. You know, the Amer in America, it's so much easier. You know, they get so much, you know, with the light change and all the time change. You know, I know Jesse said he found it really easy and he didn't want to uh, moan about it. So, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, yeah, thanks, guys. Great broadcast as always. And, um, yeah, I'll see you soon. See you thanks, soon, Les. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, take care. Um, so, Les Stevenson there, the uh, a.k.a. the Roka Poker, as we know him at the moment so um we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna say our goodbyes here tonight from rci tv uh, it's been a bit of a uh, put together broadcast uh, last minute again technical issues striking ash but again ash stepping up to the mark and uh, for his first commentary commentary broadcast i think it's gone pretty well indeed so uh, props to yourself mr bibby of Ooh, course whoa. uh <laughs> a late uwu from ash brilliant uh kevin boss of course with the uh six month uh subscription earlier on thank you very much kevin and uh five pounds from uh, ash to try and get out of the uwu which he has since done so uh props to you there well done everyone uh we'd like to thank you very much for uh joining us here tonight at rci for monday multi-class madness of course uh plenty of action still to come with us at rci keep an eye on the website again we've still got our n24 event in the pipeline so uh you know keep your eyes peeled for that one as well it's going to be a good one i can assure you of that but from myself john dalton from ash bibby alongside and from jesse lee bringing you all the pictures and of course our live stewards we'd like to thank you very much for joining us we hope you have a wonderful rest of the week and we'll catch you again next week for more monday multi-class madness take care